Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for stopping by for another video. In this one, we'll switch gears a little bit from data development and look more into infrastructure management. We'll begin to look at a really cool open source tool called Terraform, which allows you to manage your infrastructure as code. If you've stopped on this video, I'm assuming you are slightly familiar with Terraform and the reasons you would want it. Uh, but just at a high level, essentially it allows you to manage your infrastructure using code uh, rather than uh, you know one-off manually making changes to adding users, creating your databases, stuff like that. In a world now where everything is on the cloud, uh, you know you can access it from anywhere. Handling things uh, remotely using code rather than you know going logging onto the server yourself helps keep things organized and allows you to uh, transfer the work that you've done to other developers and other people to understand exactly what's going on. And also, if you ever wanted to just completely spin up the same environment all over again, you can use Terraform. There are a ton of different ways to use this. And in this video, I'm going to focus specifically on um, just getting you started with Terraform, getting it installed. And since this channel is focused primarily on database and data um, engineering type of work, I'm going to look at using a provider for our Snowflake. So if you've looked at some of the other videos, you'll see we've done some things with DBT and building our Snowflake environment. In this video, we're going to use Terraform to create some new objects, uh, grant permissions, and things like that. So let's get started. A little to preface here, this is going to be on a Windows machine, but the steps will be fairly similar on other, uh, other environments. So if we go to terraform.io, go to download, We'll hop down to our system, in my case it's Windows, and I'll download this. It's going to download a, a zipped file, which I think only is going to include an executable file that will then add to our environment variables so that um, the system can use it and we can just run from there. So it's done here, let's open this up. Show in folder. I'm going to Double click this. And you can see here it just has this executable. I'm going to extract this. And you can put this wherever you want. At this, really what's important is wherever you put this is where you'll have to reference it when you add it to your environment variable list. So let's just add it to um, program files local disk. I'll just throw it in here. I'll create a new folder called Terraform. Throw it in there. This is asking for administrator permission. I'm going to continue through this. Okay, so now it has put the executable in this file location here which we'll want to remember. Now, let's just for the sake of example, if we were to just run Terraform right now from our command line, it's not recognized. In order to get this to work, let's go to edit the system environment variables, system properties, advanced environment variables. And what we want to do here is add it to the path. So we're going to do it just for this user. So let's just do for admin path or whatever your uh, username is. Edit, new, browse, and let's go to that location. So we did local disk, program files, Terraform, okay. So it's going to look for an executable in this location. Click OK. 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 And now in here, in order for this to actually work, we need to start a whole new uh, instance of the command prompt. So close this out and open up a brand new one in order for it to recognize the new uh, path that we just added. So now if we run Terraform now, it recognizes it. We can do Terraform version. We'll see we're on version 13.5. So that's great. Now it's working. It's on our system and we can start to use it. 
It's as simple as that. So now we're up and running with Terraform and I'm actually going to stop this video here and just leave it at that for this video. In the next one, we'll begin to step into more of actually using this to build a few uh, resources in Snowflake and begin to see how we can use this. So thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please subscribe and I'll see you at the next video.